Hi everyone, and hello from all of us here at MailChimp. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Get Your Business Online with a MailChimp Website. My name's Kayla, and along with my teammate Nicole, we'll be your host for today. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. During this era of social distancing, we know how important it is for businesses to have a digital presence to connect with their customers. Everyone here at MailChimp is currently working from home, Kayla and I included. So just a quick heads up, you might hear a dog barking or some ambient noise. We really appreciate your understanding and patience while we do our best to figure out this new work setup. In today's webinar, we'll show you how to set up a website using MailChimp's free tools. Using our drag and drop editor, you can design a professional looking website to serve as a hub for your business. You can then use MailChimp's marketing channels in our all-in-one platform to share your new site with your audience. Let's take a look at our agenda for today. First, we'll talk about domains as a foundation to establish your online presence. Then we'll jump into MailChimp's website builder and show you how to set up a website from start to finish. We'll wrap things up with how to publish and share your website with your audience before we finish up with an example of a live website. And we expect that today's webinar will take around 30 minutes. After the webinar, everyone who's registered will receive a follow-up email, and it will include a recording of today's session, useful resources about domains and websites, and a quick feedback survey on this webinar, as well as other kinds of content you might find helpful right now. If you need any technical assistance during today's webinar, you can check out our guides and tutorials at MailChimp.com help. With all of that said, let's go ahead and get started. Before we dive into websites, we first wanna briefly explain domains as the foundation of your online presence. An easy way to think about domains and websites is thinking about a home. A website is the home for your brand online and an important part of your overall marketing strategy. In keeping with this analogy, if your website is the home for your marketing, then your domain is the address for your house. When your domain is typed into a browser, it'll bring up your website. Once you have some ideas for what that address could be, how do you get started? In order to own this digital address, you'll purchase a domain online through a domain provider. Let's cover two ways you would obtain a domain and use it through MailChimp. First, you can connect a domain that you already own into MailChimp. For example, you might currently own a domain that you've purchased from another tool. Once you connect the domain, you can then start setting up your website within MailChimp. You can also purchase a domain directly through MailChimp. We're currently running a domain promotion to help our small business customers who want to quickly move online. For a limited time, we're offering a free domain for five years. We'll be sending out all of the details in our follow-up email, including how to get started finding and registering your domain. The process includes a few simple steps, which we'll show you now at a high level. First, you'll search for a domain. If you already have a business name, we'd recommend using it for your domain. If your exact business name isn't available, choose a domain name that's short, pronounceable, and clearly communicates who you are. We'll suggest available domains based on your search, but you can choose from different extension options like .com or .net. Just claim your preferred domain, and then you can get started building your online presence in MailChimp. We'll be heading into our own MailChimp account in just a bit to show you how to build your own website. But first, we wanna share a few things to keep in mind before you start. First, it's important to have a clear goal in mind for the design of your website and each page on it. To achieve this, consider all of the different page elements you'll need to operate and promote your business. For example, if you sell goods, your site should include compelling product pages that encourage people to buy. If you offer a service, create pages that share descriptions of what is being provided. For example, if you host an online class, let people know what they can expect to learn in your course. Make sure your site aligns with any existing aspects of your business that would be recognizable to your audience. When people visit your site for the first time, they should be able to quickly understand who you are and what you're all about. Including elements like your branding, imagery, and color palette will help keep things consistent 
across all of your channels. Having images, product images, different versions of your logo, and other brand assets organized and ready will help you get a head start when you begin to build your site. You can grow your website by adding more pages. Updating your site with fresh new content will keep your audience engaged and encourage repeat visits. You also want your site to be discoverable by search engines like Google so that new visitors can easily find you. Here are some things to remember when designing your site. Search engines want to provide their users with the most useful, relevant content possible. It's easier for a search engine to find your site when you include keywords that reflect what your site is about. For example, if you have a plant store, you would want to include relevant words about plants, growing, watering, etc. Lastly, keep in mind that our website's feature is new, and we'll be releasing improvements and additional functionality as a direct result of feedback from our users. Studies have shown if visitors can't find what they're looking for on your website, they're going to move on to another one. So be sure to make yours as easy to navigate and eye-catching. Before we set up our own site, we're going to take a look at a few examples of websites built with MailChimp. So you can see here we have a few different types of businesses. The first is a plant store. So here's Garden House where you can purchase plants, view customer testimonials, and receive plant care advice. Our next site is for a self-taught chef, Maria Allison, who's sharing recipes and tips for cooking at home. And last, we have an e-commerce clothing store called Modern, where visitors can purchase a limited edition shirt, find out more about their sustainable business practices, and then share their new shirt on social media. So now that we have an understanding of domains and websites, let's get started with setting up our own website in MailChimp. We'll head into the app and do that now. When you first log into your MailChimp account, you'll be taken to this audience dashboard page. This page is where you can access all of the contacts in your MailChimp account. Up at the top left-hand corner in the navigation menu, we're gonna click on Create. And from this drop down, let's select website. First, we'll want to name our website. The name that we choose will appear in search results and browser tabs, so make sure it aligns with your branding. The Podit Planner is auto populated here because this is our account name, but it's also the name of our store. If we want to change that, we could do so here, but we're all good to go, so let's go ahead and select next to move on. You're going to want to choose an audience to associate your website with. So that means if you set up a sign-up form on your website, any new subscribers will automatically be added to this audience. We're going to choose our potted planner audience and then click edit my site to continue. And this takes us to the website builder where we can start to edit our site. Now the first page you see here is for styles. This is where we can set and edit global styles to apply the same fonts, colors, and logo to every page we create for our website. This is going to help streamline our site creation process and maintain a consistent brand identity. Let's go ahead and start by adding a logo. So we'll click this plus icon here. That's gonna take us to our content studio. As a reminder, the Content Studio is where you can store and organize images, documents, and other files in MailChimp. When choosing pictures of your products or purchasing stock photography, we recommend using images that align with the look and feel of your brand. This can help you keep your marketing consistent across different channels. Just remember, if you don't currently have an image that you want to use in your Content Studio yet, you can quickly add it by selecting Upload right up here. Now, we want to select a header image that will fit nicely at the top of our landing page. And we think that this simple transparent logo right here will work well for that. 
We want to set this as our logo moving forward. So now that we've selected the image, we can choose this drop down arrow next to view details and then click on set my logo. As soon as you set your logo, it'll appear anywhere you have a logo placeholder in your templates and campaigns, which is really going to help unify your content. So now that we've set this as our logo, we're just going to click insert up here at the top right. And now you can see our logo has been added to our site here on the left. In the color section, we can select the heading, paragraph, link, and button colors. So we're going to take a moment to customize these. And since we sell plants, we use a few different shades of green across all of our marketing. So we're just going to add those in here to help keep our branding consistent. And once we're done customizing our font colors, we can then move on to the fonts section. We'll just click the headings and paragraphs drop down to choose the fonts for our heading and paragraph text. And once we've made all of our changes, we can then select pages here in the top menu to move on. And this will take us to the page manager where we can customize individual pages on our site and add or remove pages as needed. In today's tutorial, we're going to focus on building out a homepage together, but we want to show you how to add additional pages to your site. To do this, you would just click here where it says add and then name your page. We're going to call our new page, our story. As a quick note, by default, these additional pages will show in your site's top navigation menu. If you don't want this page in your website's navigation, just uncheck this box here. All right, so once done, we're going to click Add to insert this new page. And then you'll be able to see it here in the top navigation bar. From here, we're going to click on Home. And then we're going to get to working on customizing our home page, which is the first page people will see when they come and visit our site. We're just going to give this a moment to load. Now, if you've designed a campaign in MailChimp before, this design editor that you see on the right with all of the content blocks should look pretty familiar. And as you can see, we're going to use this drag and drop editor to add in content, decide which sections work best for our page, and set background colors and images to fit our brand. If you've added more than one page, you can select to work on them from this page dropdown right here. You can use different sections or site pages to share your company's story, testimonials, contact information, products from your online store, and anything else you want your visitors to know about. There's placeholder content here to help guide you along, but you can delete any of the default sections. Elements you'd like to include on each page of your website are completely up to you. We want to keep our homepage pretty simple. So we're going to take a moment now to remove these about and testimonial sections. And we'll do that by hovering over them and then just selecting the trash can icon. You can also move a content block by selecting the arrow icons, edit it by selecting the pencil, or replicate it by clicking the block plus sign. All of these icons will show when you hover over a content block you want to work with. If you want to add in a new content block, just select the block you want to work with on the right and simply drag and drop it into your site page. Now, if we click to the sections tab here at the top right of the menu, we can edit section styles and settings. MailChimp website layouts are divided into sections to help organize content and guide your design. When you set fonts, colors, and other styles for a section, such as the header and featured sections, your changes will apply to all the content blocks in that area of the site. We should note setting styles for an individual content block will override any other style set on the page. And down here at the bottom, you can also restore any section you remove from your page. 
So let's take a moment to customize some of these sections. We'll start off with this featured section of our site, which you can see over here on the left. And to customize it, we'll click into where it says featured here in the menu. We want to add a background image so we can select replace here. And this is going to launch that content studio again. We want to select an image that will work nicely as a background, and we think this plant image will work well for this. Once we select the image, we'll click insert at the top right. And once inserted, we'll want to make sure that we make a few quick adjustments to the transparency of the image so this text can be seen a little more clearly. All right, that looks great. So just remember to hit save after you make changes in each section. We're gonna work on our footer section now, which can be seen here at the bottom of the site designer. So we're gonna select footer in the menu, and we're gonna change the background color of this section to align with our brand color. Once done, let's hit save one more time. And we're ready to move on to customize our blocks. So we'll click blocks in this right side menu. We're gonna start up here with the featured block and add in some of our own text. We'd like to add a message here that helps our customers understand who we are as a brand. We're all about demystifying the world of plant caretaking. So we're just gonna take a moment to add in some text now. Now, we like the way this looks, but of course, you can feel free to use the editing tools in the menu above to customize your text to look however you'd like. Always be sure to save your work before moving on to another section. So we're going to do the same to this contact section. We're gonna type in a friendly message to our customers letting them know that they can get in touch with us. We'll take just a moment to add that in. And then again, be sure to hit save and close to move on. You can also link your social media pages by selecting these icons here and adding in those links. But we're gonna move on and edit our product block that you can see right here. If you have a Squirt account, you can integrate it with MailChimp and sell your products directly through your website. If you haven't connected your MailChimp account to Square yet, we have guides and resources on our website to help you do just this. We'll be including a link to this page in our follow-up email. We want to sell a gift card to our store here on our homepage. So we're going to choose change product and then we'll select our gift card option seen here at the bottom of the dropdown. So we're going to toggle our description on and then be sure to hit save and close to move on. Move on. Now at the bottom of the page, you can edit your subscribe section right here. This is where people can sign up to your audience directly through your website, which allows you to send them email campaigns and other marketing going forward. Remember, we selected the audience associated with our website when we were initially setting our site up. We now, want to incentivize want to people to join our audience. So we're gonna type in sign up today for 15% off your first purchase. We've got an automated email that's going to be sent out with this discount code shortly after new contacts join. So just be sure to hit save and close when you're done with this section. 
And since now we've worked through our site and things are looking good, we're gonna click preview in the top navigation menu to see what our site is going to look like to visitors. And on this next page, you're gonna be able to see both a desktop and mobile preview of the site. So we're gonna take a moment and scroll through and look at both of those. Now, it's really important to remember to check both of these previews out. Mobile devices are a very popular way for people to view websites, so you should design your website with both desktop and mobile devices in mind. All right, looks pretty good to go. We're gonna click out by selecting this X to move on. And from here, let's select save and exit in the top right. This is going to take you to the website dashboard where you can preview your web pages, edit your domain name, and tracking settings. If you want to change the name of your website or the domain it's associated with, you can update those details from here. To edit your website domain and title, you would just click on your website's URL right here. And while we're happy with our website's URL and name, potitplanner.com, if you wanted to use another domain or you didn't have one yet, you would see an option here to purchase your domain. Or if you already have a custom domain, you would see an option to connect it now. Additionally, we set the site title when we were first creating our website, but if we want to make any changes to it, we could do so here as well. Once everything is all set, just hit save to move on. We're not done yet, so we're gonna go ahead and select update site tracking right here. And you'll see a variety of tracking options, starting with track with MailChimp. Make sure to check this box if you'd like to be able to see your website data in the MailChimp app. As a note, this will automatically add a notification bar that lets your first time visitors know that you use cookies to collect information and also gives them the option to opt out. This bar can be customized or disabled from the sections area of the website builder. You can also choose to add Facebook Pixel and Google Analytics tracking. And additionally, we'll also enable specific tracking under the CCPA for California residents. Once you've selected your tracking options, just go ahead and click Save to save those tracking settings. Now we're ready to publish. We'll just want to select the Edit Site dropdown button right here, and then select Publish. In the pop-up module, we'll select Publish once more to confirm. Once you publish, your site will immediately go live on the web. How exciting. You can, of course, unpublish or edit your content at any time. You can just select the Edit Site here to make any changes to your website, or you can click on the dropdown here to unpublish your site, which just means visitors will no longer be able to see it, or you can also delete it from this dropdown as well. Additionally, on this dashboard page, you'll be able to see high-level clicks and visits on each page of your website. If you want to dive in further for a more detailed view, you can click to your reports page in MailChimp to see who visited your website, subscribed to your emails, as well as the conversion rate or the percentage of people who viewed your website and then subscribed to your audience. So now we're going to take a quick look at our site. Just click on our site name here and you can see that our site is now live on the web. So awesome. Now our website is up and running and MailChimp's going to begin to report data as soon as people begin visiting. Keep in mind, publishing your website is just the beginning. Marketing is key to driving awareness about your website and getting new people to visit. With our all-in-one marketing platform, you'll have everything you need to bring your brand to life and we have multiple different campaign types that you'll have right at your fingertips. All you need to promote and share your website is already right here in MailChimp. Now let's go ahead and cover three ways to drive traffic to your new website. First, there's email campaigns. Send an email to your, Zix, is it, your friends and fans letting them know that you have a website. Simply link to your site from a regular email campaign. Next, there's social posts. You can share your website URL on social media. Just share a link to your website across all of your social channels, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
or anywhere else your audience might be. You could take this a step further with our next way to drive site traffic right through MailChimp, which is ads. And you can run an ad for your website on Facebook or Instagram. By targeting specific groups of people, like folks who live in a certain location or are within a certain age range, you can reach a large untapped audience and drive more traffic to your new website. We've covered the basics of setting up your domain and website, building your site, and sharing it through different channels. But before we wrap up for today, we'd like to take a quick look at an example of what a website built through MailChimp can look like. This is Alcove Coffee Company. They're a coffee shop that partners with small farms to source the highest quality beans for their customers. They set up their site through MailChimp recently, and when you head to their web address, the homepage starts to tell the story of who they are and what they're about right away. The site design is clean and simple with the navigation on the upper right hand side for home, menu, and shop. Scrolling down, we can see a little more about them in their About Us section right here underneath the site title. And next, they have contact information along with their store hours. Alcove's site features a shop page we saw in the top navigation bar. However, they're also prominently featuring a section here on the home page to encourage their visitors to buy a gift card to be used at the shop for coffee, beans, and merchandise. In order to do this, they connected the Square integration to their MailChimp account. And now visitors to their site can quickly and easily shop by just clicking on this button. Finally, if we scroll down a little more, they've included a section for customer reviews, along with a place to sign up for their email updates. We're gonna scroll back up and then click menu in this navigation bar to open a new page on this site that shows their current menu offerings. This is a great example of a job well done. This site showcases beautiful imagery, it's easy to navigate, includes all of the key information customers would wanna see, as well as a clear path to purchase gift cards. So with that example, we've wrapped up today's webinar. Thanks for hanging in there, everybody. As a reminder, we're going to be sending out a follow-up email to everyone who's registered. This email has a quick follow-up survey on today's webinar. We'd really appreciate your feedback and thoughts about how MailChimp can help support your small business during this time. We'll be including the recording of today's session as, long, as well as helpful resources on how to get started creating your own MailChimp website. We'll also include a link to a page on our website with resources for small business customers, including digital best practices, as well as inspiration and strategy tips. Getting your business online will help you stay better connected with your customers. We're looking forward to seeing all of the websites that you all create. And on behalf of everyone here at MailChimp, thank you so much for joining us today.